I was impressed the other day at GPT-4 doing a piece of common sense reasoning that I didn't think it would be able to do. So I asked it, I want, I, I want all the rooms in my house to be white. At present, there's some white rooms, some blue rooms and some yellow rooms. And yellow paint fades to white within a year. So what should I do if I want them all to be white in two years' time? And it said, you should paint the blue rooms yellow. That's not the natural solution, but it works, right? Yeah. Um, Jeffrey Hinton is a professor emeritus at University of Toronto and, until this week, an engineering fellow at Google. But on Monday, he announced that after 10 years, he will be stepping down. Jeffrey is one of the most important figures in modern AI. He's a pioneer of deep learning, developing some of the most fundamental techniques that underpin AI as we know it today, such as backpropagation, the algorithm that allows machines to learn. If a computer is digital, which involves very high energy costs and very careful fabrication, you can have many copies of the same model running on different hardware that do exactly the same thing. They can look at different data, but the model is exactly the same. And what that means is, suppose you have 10,000 copies, mm -hmm. they can be looking at 10,000 different subsets of the data. And whenever one of them learns anything, all the others know it. And now the 10,000 things are communicating very effectively with each other. And people can't do that. If I learn a whole lot of stuff about quantum mechanics, and I want you to know all that stuff about quantum mechanics, it's a long, painful process of getting you to mm -hmm. understand it because your brain isn't exactly the same as mine. So we have digital computers that can learn more things more quickly, and they can instantly teach it to each other. Um, but yeah. why, why is that scary? Well, because they can learn so much more, and they might... I'd take an example of a doctor, and imagine you have one doctor who's seen a 1,000 patients, and another doctor who's seen 100 million patients. You would expect the doctor who's seen 100 million patients to have noticed all sorts of trends in the data that just aren't visible if you've only seen 1,000 patients. Well, if you look at GPT-4, it can already do simple reasoning. I mean, reasoning is the area where we're still better. But I was impressed the other day at GPT-4 doing a piece of common sense reasoning that I didn't think it would be able to do. So. I asked it, I want, I, I want all the rooms in my house to be white. At present, there's some white rooms, some blue rooms, and some yellow rooms. And yellow paint fades to white within a year. So what should I do if I want them all to be white in two years' time? And it said, you should paint the blue rooms yellow. That's not the natural solution, but it works, right? Yeah. Um, that's pretty impressive common sense reasoning of the kind that it's been very hard to get AI to do using symbolic AI. Because it had to understand what, understand what fades means. And so they're doing sort of sensible reasoning. Um, but um, these things will have learned from us by reading all the novels that ever were and everything Machiavelli ever wrote, um, that how to manipulate people, right? And they'll be, if they're much smarter than us, they'll be very good at manipulating us. You won't realize what's going on. You'll be like a two-year-old, and you'll be that easy to manipulate. And so even if they don't, can't directly pull levers, they can certainly get us to pull levers. Mm -hmm. It turns out if you can manipulate people, you can invade a building in Washington without ever going there yourself. <laughs> the political system is so broken that we can't even decide not to give assault rifles to teenage boys. Um, yep. If you can't solve that problem, how are you going to solve this problem? <laughs> I wish it was like climate change, where you could say, if you've got half a brain, you'd stop burning carbon. Yep. Um, it's clear what you should do about it. It's clear that that's painful, but has to be done. Uh, I don't think we're going to stop developing them because they're so useful. So I don't think there's much chance of stopping development. What we want is some way of making sure that, even if they're smarter than us, um, they're going to do things that are beneficial for us. Mm -hmm. That's called the alignment problem. 
But we need to try and do that in a world where there's bad actors who want to build robot soldiers that kill people. And it seems very hard to me. So I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sounding the alarm and saying we have to worry about this. And I wish I had a nice simple solution I could push, but I don't. But I think it's very important that people get together and think hard about it and see whether there is a solution. It's not clear there is a solution. I think if you take the existential risk seriously, mm -hmm. as I now do, I used to think it was way off, but I now think it's serious and fairly close. Um, it might be quite sensible to just stop developing these things any further. But I think it's completely naive to think that would happen. There's no way to make that happen. I mean, if the US stops developing and the Chinese won't, they're going to be used in weapons. And just for that reason alone, governments aren't going to stop developing them. So, yes, I think stopping developing them might be a rational thing to do, but there's no way it's going to happen. So it's silly to sign petitions saying, please stop now. Mm -hmm. We did have a holiday. We had a holiday from about 2017 for several years because Google developed the technology first. It developed the transformers. It also developed the fusion models. Um, and it didn't put them out there for people to use and abuse. It was very careful with them because it didn't want to damage its reputation and it knew there could be bad consequences. But that can only happen if there's a single leader. Once OpenAI had built similar things using Transformers um, and money from Microsoft, and Microsoft decided to put it out there, Google didn't have really much choice. If you're going to live in a capitalist system, you can't stop Google competing with Microsoft. Yeah. Um, so I don't think Google did anything wrong. I think it was very responsible to begin with. But I think it's just inevitable in a capitalist system or a system with competition between countries like the US and China that this stuff will be developed. My one hope is that because if we allowed it to take over, it would be bad for all of us, we could get the US and China to agree like we could with nuclear weapons, which were bad for all of us. Yeah. We're all in the same boat with respect to the existential threat. So we all ought to be able to cooperate on trying to stop it. My worry is that those increases in productivity are going to go to putting people out of work and making the rich richer and the poor poorer. And as you do that, as you make that gap bigger, society gets more and more violent. So this technology, which ought to be wonderful, you know, even the good uses of technology for doing helpful things, ought to be wonderful. But in our current political systems, it's going to be used to make the rich richer and the poor poorer. You might be able to ameliorate that by having a kind of basic income that everybody gets. But the technology is um, being developed in a society that is not designed to use it for everybody's good.